and hate, and that's a dangerous place you want to be. Is to whereas it's bitter, you're, you're bitter, and then you went into hatred. Because, like I said, hatred it means that you 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 have no feelings. You don't you don't you're numb. You don't even want to see the person. Even if the person is saying, I'm sorry for whatever it is that they did, then you don't even want to hear it. Your past, God might have sent them to you to say, I'm sorry. And you're like, you can be, I mean, you walking with God, you should be hearing from God that God is, is, is repairing this. But you can't hear it because you're too mad. Because it then went into hatred. So now you're numb. I don't even want to have nothing to do with the person at all. They just, I'm just completely just done. So then it went into hatred. And that's a dangerous place. If it bothers you that others like that person, as I said before, and you get mad, then it's most likely bitter. You're very bitter. Let me say this. Unforgiveness can cause the body to be sick. You can get sick from, un from unforgiveness. Because every day you wake up or when that person's name is spiked in any kind of way, you get angry, you get mad, your body tenses, you get upset, you got some unforgiveness inside of you. And let me say this, some people don't even know they got unforgiveness in them. They just don't mention the person. They don't bring the name up. They don't, they don't, they don't even want to talk about it. it, it it's just eating them up inside. They just... I. I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking about them. I don't have to, I don't have to come in contact with them. I don't have to do none of this stuff. So I'm fine. But the consequences of sin is, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ and our Lord. So if there is unforgiveness inside of you, that's why I say it's going to destroy you. Because it's sin. If God is saying, I want you to forgive them. He may not tell you to go hang out with them no more. He may not tell you to deal with them no more. But he wants you to forgive. And you have to. If you want to walk with Christ, you're going to have to forgive. He forgave us, as he says. So you have to forgive them. You have to give people the same grace as he gives you. We want to be like Christ, right? We want to be like God. So we have to forgive. And so, uh, unforgiveness will hinder you with the fellowship of God. And so, and, 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 and you don't, hold on. When you don't forgive, it can destroy you. There is only so long that you can hide it because it's going to start leaking. When you, when you, when you don't forgive, people it starts leaking all over other people. You know what I said? You get mad when people don't, for, when people bring the person's name up. It, 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 it's, it's not only that, but it begins to the point where as your, you, you, your, your life is starting to shrink. Just, because here, here's the thing. When, when, you, when you don't have, when you have unforgiveness in your heart and it's sin, it's against God. God said he talked to me telling you, you got to forgive. If, if you're not trying to work on it, you're just walking around thinking you're, you're entitled to this unforgiveness. I'm not going to forgive them. And I don't care. That's what basically we say. They hurt me. I'm not going to forgive them. I'm tired of it. I'm, I, I don't like how they did this. I don't, whatever the case might be. So then you're ignoring God. You're ignoring. And, and, and we know that's not a good place to be. We ignore God. And, and that's sin. And it says, and for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. And it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows on his own flesh will from, will from the flesh reap corruption. So if we are allowing our flesh, because that's what it is, it's our flesh. I'm entitled to this unforgiveness. We didn't let the flesh get in the way. The enemy's loving it. So then we're going to reap corruption. And it, it, it's not going to go well. Your life is going to start shriveling down. You got unforgiveness in your heart. You got to deal with it. It's like having it's like having a, a, a bacteria over your body, and it's, it's it's eating you away. And like I said, some people go to the grave, not forgiving people, or they are on earth and somebody's died and they didn't forgive them. 
They still walking around bitter, angry, and within the hatred. Now they have no, they have no feelings. But God can help you. Hallelujah, Jesus. So it says that do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows, he will reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will reap the flesh, uh, reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the uh, spirit reap eternal life. So if you forgive, that's why I said nothing on this earth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't let it stop you from forgiving that person. Because you is eternal life and we are going to the grave. I'm not here to, sh to, to frighten you, to scare you. And you shouldn't be frightened anyway if you're walking with Jesus. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, But we don't want to have anything to separate us from the love of God. We don't want to be angry with folks and unforgiveness with folks. Forgive them. And you know what? Even if the person still continues to act in that behavior, still forgive them and pray for them. Pray that they see, you know, that they would see the truth of, of what they need to see. But for your own good, forgive them. Forgive them. Because when you don't forgive, it destroys you. And it starts, you can't hide it. It starts leaking. And unforgiveness, again, is sin. And the consequences of it are of it is sin. The consequences of it is sin. Disobeying God. Disobeying God. By not wanting to forgive. Like you're saying... You're ignoring God. You're not going to, I'm not going to forgive them. I don't care. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not forgiving them and it is what it is and, and they don't care. And so disobey God, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulties for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, Disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpleasable, slander, without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with con uh, conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying his power. Avoid such people. In the last days, COVID really, really, really jacked up a lot of people. And I know people can uh, know where I'm coming from. It, it, it was supposed to better it, but it made it worse. And a lot of times, it we're in our last days. We can tell that for sure. But it really messed up a lot of people because it made a lot of people that when, when we was all isolated, it would either make you want to love and be around people or would make you want to distance yourself from people or it would make you feel justified and then a lot of people turned numb because a lot of people passed away so they they got numb numb to death numb to anger numb to you know numb to forgiveness numb just numb the enemy is really trying to trying to pack it pack the house in hell he, he's trying to pack the house in hell but it says, it says, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulties. It says that. Times of difficulties. And you can see it. For people will be lovers of self. So if somebody's a lover of the self, they're definitely not going to think. They, they're, you know, I'm going to stay angry. I'm going to stay mad. I'm not, for, I'm not forgiving the person. I, it's a lover of self. It's called pride. And God said, humble thyself. And pride, we know, is before the fall. That's why I said, unforgiveness will destroy you. you got to find a way to forgive them. And you can find that way through Jesus Christ. God will help you. But it says that people will be lovers of self. Lovers of money, proud, arrogance, abusive. And so when people have a lot of money, they feel like they don't need to forgive nobody. The money 
money is a deceitful thing. Let me say this. It, it, it's good for the kingdom of God because it grows, you know, it helps people. But to be a lover of money and that's all you care about is money, money. I need to get to the money. I need to get to the bag and all this stuff. You definitely feel like you have power. And when people feel like they have power, they don't feel like they, people owe them. They, they get this, this self-righteous thing. People owe me. Matter of fact, they owe me an apology. And, 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 I'm not, and, and I'm not forgiving them. And, and I, I can't do no wrong. They don't look at them being wrong. They don't care about the wrongness of what they did. They step on top of folks like stepping on ants. And they don't care. That's why money is the root, of, they say, root to all evil. Because when people have too much of it or they don't use it in a godly way, be content with what you have where you are right now. Because God will give you more. But at the same time, when it comes to the point of power, people don't care about. They look at us, look at people like little people. And the only one supposed to be looking at us like that is God. Because we are, you know, he's God. But there's no one else who's God. But when people get to that status where they feel like the money will cover up what, what they feel they, you know, I need to forgive. Or, or somebody's asking for forgiveness and they don't care. Because they got power. They got money. They don't care. So it says the lovers of money, proud. That means they're arrogant. People are arrogant, abusive. They don't care. They call somebody all kinds of names. Don't go back and apologize. No nothing. This is what we're dealing with. This, this is the last days. And it says that disobedient of, of their parents. You know, and, and you see all that. Ungrateful. Where people just totally ungrateful for others. Even ungrateful for people. We take people for granted, think they're going to be here forever. COVID, if COVID didn't teach us nothing, it taught us that people are not going to be here forever. We knew that already. We know death. But COVID took a lot of people passed away. But people are still treating people like they're going to be here forever. And that is far from the truth. But when we do go to glory, hallelujah, Jesus, will, it, will that be a day? Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But it says that ungrateful, unholiness, heartless. So people will be heartless, unpleasing, slandering, slander, slander, slanderous, slandering people's name. Don't care if it's the truth, whatever. It's getting worse. Don't try to see if it's the truth, what they're saying or nothing out of their mouth. Just telling a story, gossip, everything. Don't know if they have not seek the truth, didn't go to the person, everything. And then when they tell them a lie on the person, and the person is hurt by that, they still don't feel they owe them apology. But it says, without self-control, people will be this way. It's no self-control. Just doing whatever. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, and, and God's not in that. He's not in that. Not loving good. So even if they, they, they're not going to feel like, this is all connected. Think about it. They're not going to feel as though uh, uh, for uh, uh, forgiveness. Because they don't want no good. It's, it's like they don't care. They are about themselves. Treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit. Lovers of pleasure rather than lover of God. Hmm. And the appearance of godliness, but denying his power. So then if we say that there's no way I can forgive them, we deny God his power as well. That's denying God his power. He said, I could do, you could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if we saying that, but we walking around with unforgiveness in our heart, we declare and say that we are a child of the most high God. We're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Then we should be able to forgive. It says, it, it says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that person that hasn't forgiven or that you haven't forgiven. Remember, you yourself have fallen short. Remember, remind yourself of that. You yourself have fallen short. For we it says, the Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God is the God that forgives. And we ought to too. We ought to forgive too. And this is this is a being disobedient and not listening to God. And, and when God says to forgive, when God says to forgive, 
For as by a, a one man's disobedient, the many were made sinners. So by one man's disobedient, the many will be made righteous. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. So then you have a lot of people that don't, they not trying to forgive again. And, and, and here's the thing, you hear people say, I don't think God is listening to me. I don't, I don't think God is talking to you, but maybe the unforgiveness has stopped your ears from hearing. He's talking and maybe telling you to forgive that person, but you can't hear him. You can't hear him. But God is a good God and he's faithful. He's faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. What is the rewards of forgiving and being obedient? We know that death, sin is death. We know that if a person doesn't, doesn't uh, forgive people, we know that that's a sin. It's sin. And sin is death. And it, it is it is sin. But what is what is the rewards for forgiveness? The rewards. Let me say this. God will help you if you feel like you can't forgive that person. We say all these things of what could happen. You know, it could destroy you. It can, it can, it can humiliate you. Which even with even with humiliation, God can still do something with that. God can help you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. And I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So even when God is speaking and telling you to forgive that person. The person has probably apologized to you. Still can't find it in your heart to forgive. God said I will help you. And, and, and let me say this. I feel like I need to say this. A lot of times we got those yes mans. Yes mans and yes women. Whereas we have those people who tell us. That it's okay to stay away from folks. And that it's okay to not to forgive that person. That is the wrongest type of people you want around you. You want people that will tell you, look, you need to forgive that person. I love my husband so much. Because my husband will not only, he will, he will, he will be on my side at times, but he will tell me when I need to forgive. And I love him for that. That's part of the reason why I love him. And he's been like that since day one. But you can, and my children are that way. When you have a bunch of people around you to tell you that you, and, it, and even if it's family, they should not be telling you it's not okay to forgive people. I hope I said that right. You got those yes mans. That, and, 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 and when people got those yes mans that are rich, they wind up going broke. And you gonna go broke with them yes mans. Them yes men that have you sinning. Because they telling you it's alright. It's okay. You ain't gotta forgive them. You know you, you know you right. It's always something that they want out of it because they're telling you that. They need to be telling you the truth. And if they're Christians, they should know that you have to forgive. But God can help you forgive. You got to, you got to pray and ask this. Sometimes it's the word what people's giving you is it righteous. Because people will tell you anything. They catch you. You you got you, you you ran to them in your feelings. And they, oh, they see you broke down. And you crying and you hurt. They did this to me. They did that to me. Oh, you, you, you right why you won't forgive them. And that's not right. But you got people that will get, they yes men and yes women. They'll tell you, yes, you right about not forgiving people. About not doing right things. And have you in trouble. You better listen to God. You better listen to God. 
God says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God said that I, I will help you. You're not, you don't have to do this alone. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you forgive that person. We can't do anything on our own. Sometimes it be something that somebody did way back. And, 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 and it festered and it stayed. And again, like I said, it turns into hatred. And it's eating you up. It, for, it says, for God gave us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and of sound mind. Self-control. Another, another verse says, or another uh, uh Another, uh, the same scripture, but a different, different Bible. It says that. It says, for God gave us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. So God did not give us the spirit. When, when we don't want to forgive, we have a little fear there. I'm going to lose control. As long as I don't forgive them, I got control. I got power. You have none. You have no power. They've taken all of your power because they got that much power over you. So I don't know why people think that. Sometimes we think I got power. I haven't forgiven them and I own them. And they going on with their life. And you still hear bitter. Angry. Man. And then it turned into hatred. Or the person that passed on. They gone and left. Every time you see. I see somebody the other day. And a person got rewarded something. And they were famous. And they got rewarded. And the other person, you could see them getting mad. They got mad because they still hate that person. And that person's long gone. Probably in glory, I'm sure of it. And the person here is just angry and mad. And it's destroying their life and you can see it. You can see it. God wants us to forgive. And he can help you. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear. Or be dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will, he will not leave you nor forsake you. God will help you in every situation that you are facing. Everything you go through. Whatever it is that you, that you are battling. God will help you. Unforgiveness. When you need to forgive people. That's one of them. God will help you. And what is the rewards of forgiving people? You see it says. That they are a warning to those who, who hear them. It says, the Bible sets out the altitude of, of the Lord's commands. In verse 11 it says, they are warnings to those who hear them. There is a great reward for those who obey them. So if God tells you to forgive somebody, that's a command. It's not a commandment. about that. It's a command. God says to forgive. He said if I forgive you, you ought to forgive your brother, your enemies. It's a command. And he says that they are warnings to those who hear them. It's a warning. I've asked you to forgive. And, 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 and will we'll not listen. I don't want to hear that, God. They did, they did this to me. Instead of turning to God and saying, God, help me. That's the best thing. Help me to forgive them. Help me to forgive. Because it says there is great reward for those who obey them. If you obey the commands of God, when he commands, that's a command. He says to forgive. God says to forgive. And it's being obedient. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you are willing to be obedient, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you obey what God is saying, God is saying this. This is that's why I say it's going to benefit you. Not the person is going to benefit you. Pray for them. For the next 30 days, pray for them. Pray for them like never before. Pray for them. Pray for them.
Pray for them. want to to think about this for a while and think about this now is there somebody that you haven't forgiven and you need to forgive them you need to forgive them they 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 mistreated you they did you wrong they or they ain't did nothing and you just they get on your nerves or they, whatever, whatever it was, they embarrassed you, public, private, whatever. They embarrassed you and you just don't, can't find it in your heart to forgive. If God is in your heart or maybe God isn't in your heart, you can find forgiveness for that person in your heart. You can forgive them. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, they wronged you. There's some people who probably got left in a relationship. And they feel like, I can't forgive that person. You can. And it's a reason why God removed them. But you thought you you blamed yourself. You blamed them. You, you blamed a lot of different situations. But you can't forgive. Maybe it was so embarrassing to you that you can't find forgiveness. You can. When God says I can do all things through Christ. When the word says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He will strengthen you. He will give you the strength. He will give you the strength to carry on. He will give you the strength to make it through. He will give you the strength to forgive. He will give you the strength to walk away. From that unforgiveness. He will give you the strength. He will even give you the strength to go up and apologize. He will give you the strength. And this is when we say that people deny God his power because God can do anything. There is nothing. Well, he can do everything but this. He can do it all. But I want you to think about that right now. Luke 6 and 46 says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? God is calling you into repentance today. Repentance. Repentance. Repentance to come home to Jesus. And I'm talking about giving your life to Jesus. And repentance to forgive. To forgive that person. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer and say the person's name that you need to forgive. Father God, Lord God Jesus, I have held on to this unforgiveness for so long. And Lord God, we know, Jesus, that it's a sin. That it's a sin to have unforgiveness in our hearts. Lord God, may I forgive that person that I've held on to, that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that hatred, Father God. May they, Lord God, forgive in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We know that all things are done through you, that you can strengthen us, Father God, and pull them, Lord God, out of that unforgiveness feeling, that hatred, that bitterness, that anger, that jealousy, it turned into jealousy because they see that person getting blessed. Father God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you, Lord God, are the healer. You're the healer, Father God, Father God, the doctor that can operate on our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, and we repent, Lord God, of anything we've had in our hearts, Father God, that is not pleasing to you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, that you are operating. You operate on us and change us and mold us and make us into what you want us to be. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 
and you say that person's name and you forgive, you feel like a burden lifted off of you. It's a burden. You let the cage open and let the bird out. I say let the bird out, let it fly. Because you've kept them in a cage that 